Good evening and welcome once again to the NCN's debate series on corruption. This series examines a selection of seven very important national issues, mainly arising from projects initiated by the government of Guyana and projects that have generated much controversy related to charges of corruption. We intend to highlight these issues over a series of seven debates with the hope that they will be analyzed and the public will be duly informed. Now, this is the second in the series, and in this discussion, we focus the proposed Marriott Hotel and the charges of corruption. Our intention is to engage and debate every issue regarding this project with the aim of separating the facts from the propaganda and clarify the crucial questions surrounding this issue. I am Al Crichton, and with me are members of a very worthy panel. We have with us the Honorable Dr. Ashney Singh, Minister of Finance, Mr. Winston Brassington, Executive Director of NISIL and of the Privatization Unit, Mr. Odinga Lumumba, the Honorable Odinga Lumumba, Member of Parliament and our Governmental Advisor, the Honorable Kemraj Ramjatan, leader of the Alliance for Change and member of parliament, and Captain Jerry Govaya, representing the private sector. We did expect a representative from a partnership for national unity, but we do not have a representative from that party <coughs> this evening. We are going to proceed with, first of all, giving information and we want a statement from Mr. Brassington which very clearly and simply and briefly set out exactly what is the Marriott Hotel project. So we'll invite Winston Brassington to lead us off in that. Thank you. Evening everyone. Let me say that I welcome this opportunity um, to have a face-to-face -face engagement. For the past, past few months, we've seen a lot said about corruption, but the substance of it has not been put to us properly. The Marriott project has been under development for close to 10 years. When the private investor withdrew in early 2009, based on the financial markets collapse, the government took on the baton of moving the project forward. And in every step that we took, we did it in an open and transparent manner. First, in early 2009, we began by putting an advertisement in the newspapers, inviting partners for a joint venture development of the proposed hotel project. Coming out of that, we selected a firm to design the project and secure the Marriott approval. We secured that approval late 2009 and we signed a letter of intent. Following that, in 2010, we then proceeded with a public advertisement inviting firms to be pre-qualified to build this project. We received 23 applications for pre-qualification. We pre-qualified seven firms, of which two submitted tenders. Earlier this year, we advertised for a supervision contractor, or a supervision firm, to supervise the contractor. Con contractor. We got two bids, we selected the lowest. Earlier this year, we also advertised um, a final call for investors for the project, um, for equity investors. We have a number of responses. We haven't selected anyone as yet. We will very shortly, next month, advertise for the operators of the entertainment complex, the casino, the nightclub, and the restaurant. 
So everything that we have done so far has been done in an open and transparent manner. In addition to that, earlier this year, in response to parliamentary questions posed by Mr. Ramjitan, we submitted a detailed response and copies of all of the major contracts that we can make public. Um, Mr. Bassington, if you were to say in two sentences what the Marriott Hotel project is, what, what would you say? Basically, it's a construction of a 197-room hotel project which will be operated by Marriott International on a long-term basis. The construction of an entertainment complex which will have a casino, nightclub, and restaurant separately operated and the construction of a concrete boardwalk to link the pier with the existing seawall. Thank you very much. At this point, I wish to invite the Honorable Minister of Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, to make an opening statement on behalf of the government. Thank you very much, uh, Al. Um, let me first of all uh, thank uh, and congratulate uh, the NCN Television Network for initiating this uh, series of programs and indeed thank you for uh, moderating the series of programs. I believe that bringing to a forum such as this and bringing into the living rooms of your viewers these issues of topical interest serves an extremely important purpose for the following reason. I've been on public record as saying that I believe that Guyana is at an extremely exciting time in our economic uh, history, an ex extremely exciting junction in our economic history. We have before us a number of extremely important catalytic projects that once implemented will serve to transform in a very literal way and a very vis visible and tangible way, transform the economy of Guyana and transform the lives and the well-being of the people of Guyana. There are a number of these projects. The Amaila Falls project is the Amaila Amaya Falls Hydroport project is one. The Marriott Hotel, of course, is another, uh, and there are other uh, uh, similar large catalytic projects that would have this positive transformative impact on our country. Regrettably, we've witnessed um, these projects being labelled by some sections of the media and by some sections of the political opposition as, uh, in some cases, secret projects and having the label of corruption attached to them, unfairly and unjustifiably so. And we welcome the opportunity to expose these projects to the ultimate degree of scrutiny because they've all been implemented in accordance with the strictest of standards and strictest of compliance with uh, uh, acceptable norms. You will wrap up now. And very importantly, we believe that they're projects that should enjoy, given the positive transformative impact that they c can have, that they're projects that should enjoy strong, broad-based support. So I want to thank you very much for initiating this program, the series of programs, and in particular, identifying the Maya project for discussion today. Okay. Um, we now ask Mr. Odinga Lumumba, to make his opening statement. First of all, I think both Mr. the Minister and Mr. Branson and went at length to point out the social and economic viability of these projects. The Marriott Hotel project was not an empty dream. We have had problems in the past of fulfilling requests of international agencies and forms and conventions who want to come to Guyana and participate in different forms of activities. And the reality is, Guyana does not have enough first-class rooms. Our best hotel, technically, is the, is the Pegasus and then the Princess. But both of them are severe limitations, severe limitations. And a country does not expect to move forward unless it can host internationalism and host entertainment activities. Recently, there's been a, a bevy of activities with the oil exploration. And every single room in the Pegasus was occupied or taken by the oil company, 90%. So the traditional individuals or visitors couldn't find a room in the Pegasus or even the Princess because oil company. If we have an oil boom, let us say, for example, we find oil in February or January, November this year, automatically there will be thousands of individuals visiting Guyana for all kinds of oil-related activities, and they will have to sleep on the road. They basically, they will have to sleep in the streets. 
the other fundamental issue about this notion of corruption, something is only corrupt when there's evidence that there's been a financial transaction. You cannot just say an activity is corrupt unless someone says they received a percentage or received hard evidence. The opposition has so far not have been able to bring this evidence. Secondly, you can also say something is corrupt if there's no need for the activity. So the owner side thinks there's an activity to prove that there's no need for another hotel. One would argue that the government should not be involved in this business. It's true the Caribbean and third world countries. Okay, wrap up now. There are evidence that governments have been involved in this project to drive the economy. Trinidad is an example. Trinidad is almost a first class nation, a first class country, and Trinidad has built the highest from government funds and rehabilitated the Hilton Hotel. Also, you can find those examples in Barbados. So we believe these projects are important, they're viable, and we need to do them to encourage economic development in our country. All right, thank you very much. And uh, now I wish to invite Kemrad Ramjatan to make his opening statement. Thank you very much, Carl. It's nice to be here once again, um, dealing with the Marriott this time. It was the Amayla the last time. Let me make it quite clear from the inception. The Alliance for Change feels that there is no commercial justification for spending this huge set of taxpayers' money, literally, or at least the startup finances coming from Nissil, equity of $4 million, design cost, all taxpayers' money. When, quite clearly, the occupancy levels of hotels that were made here for the World Cup cricket and all are so low. I want to also emphasize that we have other priorities. Tourists will not come to Guyana in the state it is in, you know, garbage city, poor electricity, a number of negatives. We should take taxpayers' money and get involved in clearing up those things from negative to positive before we start thinking. And the example of Trinidad is totally outlandish at this point. Trinidad is an extremely rich country. Its government has huge amounts in their coffers, in its coffers, and they can spend the way they are spending. We have other priorities, which in my view, at this stage, ought to be the priorities that the government should be spending in. We have things like the, the, the bridge, that, the, the Demerara Harbor Bridge. It's going to collapse soon, quite frankly. Why not start taking that 52 million US dollars and see some additional inflows and get yourself a permanent a high span bridge? It will help both the West Demerara and the Georgetown city residents. And this is where I have lots more to say, but since it's two minutes and I notice it's almost one minute and some, I will make my additional points. Thank you very much, and thank you for being so precise in your timing. <laughs> <laughs> we now ask Captain Jerry Govaya to make his opening statement. Thank you very much, and um, it's also my pleasure to be here. But to say, first of all, I, I have heard many um, pronouncements in the Marriott Hotel. I've never heard any pronouncements and accusations of corruption over the Marriott Hotel deal. I, I've heard people who, and, and like, I, I was sorry to hear the position of the AFC just now because um, people who have said there's no need for the Marriott. And I think Minister Ashley is saying you, 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 you put it in the right perspective in terms of transformation projects. In fact, when um, Vincent Basson was asked to say in, in two sentences about the, uh, the Marriott, the Marriott is a transformational tourism project uh, and it will, it will catapult the tourism industry to the next level. And it takes visionary leadership, I believe, um, to be able to understand what is coming. You cannot wait. You have to be prepared and you have to plan for it. At the moment, let me say to you, when I started my own Arrow Point Nature Resort, for example, we were running maybe 500 people a year. Now we are running up to 7,000 people a year and, and we are still moving and uh, the hotels are filled. So th that's the first, the first thing I want to say. That we have not heard that. We have heard people say that why government funds and it is not necessary. Um, what is also important to note is I think where Guyana is now, and those of us who are investing in Guyana and planning for the future, we are not planning for Guyana to be where it is in five years or ten years to be here. We are seeing the growth, and we expect, we expect, I've flown investors into Guyana who, when they went to, to our local hotel industry, my own hotels, and I think um, the point was made about the, the first class standards. I think we have, to, we have to prepare ourselves for the future. When the New York subways were being built, there were five million people in New York. It was built for 20 million people. The people who were building it were called crazy. 
And I say we, ha we say we have to have these trans transformation projects and leaders that are bold enough to see the future and prepare for it. All right, thank you very much. At this point now, we are going to go to a break. And um, during the, pro the program, members of the wider audience are invited to send in comments and questions. And they have been collected and organized by Ms. Stacey Carmichael James. And we're going to go to her now in a break to hear what these comments and questions are. Good evening, viewers, and welcome again to the Feedback Desk. Now, this evening, we have a few comments coming into the NCN email address. The first email that I have here says, Hi, good night. Permit me to share this comment. I believe the PPP has the country's best interest at heart. However, the way they are going ahead with encouraging economic development should be transparent. The government currently does not have the blessings of the taxpayers to fund these projects, as evidenced by their minority status in Parliament, or so the opposition would like us to believe. Naysayers and those looking to hold back Guyana for political gain must not be discounted, as they too may have a point even if it's facetious. Remember, any development that is good for Guyana will be bad for the opposition. So one would not expect the opposition to cozy up to plans for development. The second uh, email we have is from Malachi Austin. He says, as a Guyanese who frequents the USA, I would like to say that as Guyana grows economically, there will be greater demand for the expansion of the hospitality industry. And I believe that the Marriott will help to provide quality service and fill the gap in the industry, a gap which is clearly evident when one travels overseas as much as I do. The other email comes from Yolanda Charles. Hi guys, my contribution for tonight is... A simple one. If Guyana is to truly take its place among the many destinations competing for a share of the tourism market, then top-class facilities such as the Marriott are needed. And while the role of the opposition is to hold government accountable, it should not be an obstacle to the country's forward thrust. I trust that this project is allowed to become a reality as there is no doubt that its benefits to the country are enormous. So those are the emails that we have currently coming in. Now we'll go back to the debate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stacey. And now we are going to move into the, 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 the actual debate, having heard the opening remarks from the, 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 the participants. And here, just to uh, remind us to, uh, as to how we proceed in debates of this nature, uh, first of, uh, of all, we ask the participants to be to the point and brief in their interventions. We also want to remind them that even though sometimes questions might not be directed to, to specific persons to them, that they are free to come in and make their comments on that particular question. And we are now going to get into the first question that I want to put to the panel. And it has to do with the whole question of corruption that are uh, involved in the charges that have been made about this Marriott Hotel project. And it is that the project has been described as a secret project, that the charge is that there's a lot of secrecy surrounding the project, secret deals, unknown deals, and, they, and that it is fraught with corruption. I would put that to the panel to address that particular charge. Well, let me say, um, first of all, that the, this particular project has been in the public domain and been the subject of public consciousness, public discussion, for almost a decade now. Winston Brassington said this in his statement. The public has been well aware that there has been private sector interest in developing a Marriott Hotel for many, many years. At the point that the government became involved and took the decision that we would implement this project as a public-private partnership, that is to say government making a modest investment to catalyze a larger investment by the private sector to implement the project. We went immediately to the public. We invited, like Winston Brassington said, we invited expressions of interest from potential investors. We received those at the time that we 
uh, took the decision to go to construction or to invite bids for construction. We advertised that publicly. That was in the public domain as well. When we were going to award the contract for supervision, again, we went uh, through a public process. And these facts are well documented. In fact, uh, Winston Rassington alluded to a question posed by Mr. Ramjitan in Parliament, to which we responded. And we tabled in the Parliament a substantial volume of documents that address a number of these issues. So to the extent the government has been involved in this project at every stage, there has been uh, adherence to all of the norms of, of uh, transparency and accountability that, that, that one might expect. In fact, it's significant to note that in Mr. Ramjitan's opening remarks, the principal concern that he expressed was, is there need for this project? That's the concern that he expressed as distinct from a concern in relation to transparency mm -hmm. and accountability with respect to the execution that of was my first steps, two minutes. Steps, of <laughs> steps <laughs> thus far. Um, and I will say this, that I do disagree with him on the question of the need for the project. I think Jerry Gavai, who knows the industry best amongst us, has already answered that uh, question. Um, let me emphasize that the assertion that this project is somehow being executed using public resources is not an accurate assertion. This is a public-private partnership. And I could hardly think that one could argue with an initiative that will see a 58 to 60 million US dollar investment made, the overwhelming majority of which is private sector okay. resources. Okay. The overwhelming majority of which is private investment being made in an important sector such as the tourism sector. So this is not a public project. This is not the government saying we're investing 60 million US dollars. It's a small, much like the Bobby's River Bridge was, it's a small public investment being made to catalyze a much larger private investment. Okay. Yeah, let me just make this additional point. Uh, that indeed, if it is going to be such a profitable thing, why is it that a private sector not coming in exclusively to deal with these things. And I want to make the point as was raised by Jerry, that of course we have to have transformational um, projects and all that. I remember, and I'm, Jerry, I, I, I want it to be made clear here, that when government wanted to get into the airline business, you were one of the first that indicated the government shouldn't get into the airline business. That is never trying. Please, please. No, 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 no. You, you made that point that these are matters exclusively for the private sector no. and they, they, there's efficient so. I, I must, I, I'm okay. with respect, I never said so. All right, Jerry. You and, and we are saying in the hotel industry here, let the private sector, why take up so much millions of Ghana do, um, US dollars of, of taxpayers' money? Uh, when the occupancy rates are low, and of course we are not so certain what will happen here. The, 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 the monies that we'll have to put up here is a huge set. And uh, the, it could turn out to be that it is not profitable. Within three years, a lot of money that will come in the form of payments out for loans, from my statistics here, will mean that at least you'll have to pay um, interest rates on about four to two million dollars on this project. And at about 10% rate and it'll take a three-year construction period or two years, you have a lot of money before you, you start even making any profit that you'll have to pay out. You have done so much in relation to the other hotels, as we mentioned, for the World Cup. You built the princess, so many other things. We feel that this thing here got, and it is difficult at this stage to prove, but I believe that there is a special syndicated uh, set of person um, loans that they're talking about that will take priority to over that which Nissel is going to borrow to put into the um, this this project. We understand from the answer the question that I had asked, how much would Nissel put? Nissel said it will put four million equity, two million to design it, and a fifteen million U.S. dollars loan. Now, where Nissel is getting all that money from? We were only the other day was talking about monies in Nissel and we were being told that it doesn't have much money and it is not necessarily taxpayers, um, it is not necessarily money that should go into the consolidated fund. We are saying with all of this, in addition, that Nissel now is setting up a company which it will be the shareholder of called AHI, Atlantic Hotels Incorporated. And who is the main chief uh, um, person there? It is again Mr. Bassington. 
Bassington looms large over these Nisil and Ahi and all of that. And we feel that this thing, obviously, a lot of it, especially now, and I close here in relation to my little two minutes, the, 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 the feasibility study. We were told that Marriott is saying that it is very feasible. Well, why Marriott, international, big, rich company like that, don't come and put up the money for build this thing? Well, there is an unnamed right, American good. firm. Okay, I think, uh, um, I, I think first of all, I think first of all that um, Jerry was trying to respond to a point, and then we will come to we will come to you. The objection that we've had is with the Guyan Defense Force using military airplanes to compete with the private sector. Yes, oh, no, 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 no. But That's I would have no problem if the government of Guyana decided to invest in a transformation airline that will take us back into the international market. I, as a, as a leader in the private sector, would have no difficulty if we went in to do a, to what is transformational projects. So if we went to do another in, a, nas a national carrier that will take Guyana back into the international market, I would have no objection. In fact, I would support that as well. I just wanted to make that point to you. Okay, Mr. good. Mr. Thank you very much. One second. Mr. I'm amazed. Mr. Ramjitan is a leader for political party, and I'm amazed at his lack of vision. Lack of vision. vision, lack of vision, and lack of truth and knowledge. I remember when they built the subway systems in America. If you compare subways in America today from yesterday, people would say it doesn't make sense. Some projects is not in direct economic achievements, but it's the long-term projections. If you didn't have a subway in New York today, subway is totally no, no. Let me let me make my point. Structural subway, is a subway oh is an infrastructure yeah. project for all the citizens with the population and citizens. The Marriott is an impact project that will help generate gen business as well. The Marriott yeah. will help generate revenue for this country, create employment directly and indirectly. Mm. Governments throughout the world, even the great United States, have direct investment in many projects whether it be roads whether it be airports whether it be hotels this is not new what we're doing we speak about corruption you can measure corruption for example it's basic engineering to determine what is the capital cost or what's the unit cost of construction of a building and we come to find that. the unit cost of the matter you will be able to determine whether the project is overbuilt absolutely whether it's too much cost you asked for example why the private sector has not got involved in the market why is the private sector not involved in many things in Guyana? In large tell farms. Me, you tell me. Well, uh, the, 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 but the point you're making, as if the private sector has selected the Marriott. I can raise other questions. For example, I believe personally that your objection to the Marriott is a political objection. It's because of your relationship with Mr. Badal, because he's a su supporter of AFC. I believe your objection, it got nothing to do with economics. Because okay. you have not uh, economic uh, point uh, here. Uh, I think Gassington. it's political, and it's a personal relationship with Mr. Badal. Okay. And, and the Mar All right, Mr. Lumumba. Oh, okay. Okay. you can go right ahead and I, say that. Gentlemen, I would like to invite Mr. Bassington to respond. This project is feasible. It is commercially feasible. And over the years, it has become increasingly commercially feasible. The private sector has not seen any major international branded hotel come to Guyana in over 40 years. The Guyana Pegasus was the last one. I'm talking major international brand. So the market on its own is not doing this. We had a major American firm conduct a feasibility study in the project was done in 2010, was updated earlier this year. It gives an overall project internal rate of return based on all of the current numbers in excess of 10%. Now, the reason that the government is investing one third of the funds, a position that was not stated recently, it was stated since last year, is because whilst the project is feasible, in order to enable the private investment the project is not at the level where the internal rate of return is high enough. But it is still feasible. If we compare this to the Burbage Bridge, had we not got involved and helped to crowd in the private investment, just like we are doing here, the Burbage Bridge would not have happened. And this is an important infrastructure because the travel and tourism sector contributes according to the World Travel and Tourism Council 2012. The travel and tourism sector accounts for over 9% of GDP and over 26,000 jobs. 
the direct and indirect impact of travel and tourism is extremely important and the Marriott Hotel project has to be linked to projects like the stadium, the local Ogle Airport expansion, the Chedi Jagan Airport expansion. So for someone to argue that this is a not an important sector, that it's not commercially viable, is at the minimum being short-sighted. I I think the question was raised about the private sector, why are we not involved? I want people to remember this. The private sector was totally annihilated in this country. We, there's a rebirth in this private sector that started in 1989. This private sector is a relative teenager, you know. We, this private sector is now rebuilding, and to do a project like the Marriott or the international, a real international um, airline, you need, it, it, it calls for a lot of financing. And so that's, that is why I, I, I I support this project in the sense that it's it, it needs it needs government it needs government intervention to kickstart the project, and then you as, as the economy grows and we and, and more private sector development happen, you'll see more of these hotels happening. The private sector, remember, was annihilated. It started building back in 1989, 1980, and then it, it accelerated as, uh, as we are today. But the private sector is still a teenager. I want you to remember that. All right, but before in, we come in, 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 fa in, in fact, Mr. Moderator, I think Jerry makes an important point here. It is not accurate to say that the private sector is not involved in this project because, like, I have been at pains to emphasize, the project is a pro is one that will be implemented in co in collaboration with private sector partners. We have said it will be a public-private partnership. It will have private investment uh, funding the majority of the of the of the, of the project. The point that Jerry made makes about the relative. The, the rebirth of the private sector, given its decimation in the pre, uh, in the 1970s and 1980s, is an important one. We don't have an environment where you have any single private sector investor, any single domestic private sector investor, who can take on a project of this magnitude. And we don't have an environment where our private sector has much experience in consortial financing or complex fi uh, project financing structures. What we're trying to do is to create such an environment uh, to structure transactions that will encourage this, the, 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 the use and replication of this model. The Barbies River Bridge was a good example. If you had left it up to a single private sector investor to come up to One the table and say, I have 40 million US dollars and I'm going to invest in a bridge, One chances are you'd wait another 20, 30 years for a bridge. Okay. We took the initiative, if you bear with me for a couple more minutes, Mr. Moderator, we took the initiative more to structure the transaction in a way that brought private investors to the table. I do have a couple other points to make too. I, 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 I mean, I, I'm happy to make them now or if you want somebody else to come. Okay, to what we have to do now is go to a break because we, we, are, we have to stick to program time and we go to a break. I know that um, Ken Rajamjatan had something he was burning to say <laughs> and uh, as, soon as, as soon as we return from the break we either allow him to, 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 to speak and then we, we return to you Mr. Minister. Sure. Sure. So Thank we go to a break. Welcome back viewers. Well, the emails continue to pour into our address as well as the Facebook comments. Our first email in the second break comes from Todd Morgan. Questions about whether Guyana's tourism market is large enough to accommodate a top class hotel such as the